I'm Sigourney Weaver, and I just want to say, hey, buckle up. Here comes a new Smartless. Smart. This is a uh, listener. We're panning Sean's billiard room uh, at no, his no, house. No. That's now okay, become no, your. To... O- Wait a second. Pan that again. He has a, such a beautiful no, no. office. I put a pool table in this room because, uh-huh. like, an old pool table that was cheap. Because <laughs> don't 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 try. <laughs> no, it's true. Yeah, it was cheap. I got the cheap. cheapest uh, not, yacht I, I could <laughs> find. It floats. Um, it's got a beautiful sail. <laughs> Um, no, no. And so I was like, because because it was like a, this little room that was an office. And I was like, I don't need an office. I just need, where is he? Is he in Toronto? He's, yeah, he's at his parents' place. Oh, There he is. Looking. Listener, um, Arnett yeah. is late, but he's clearly on Toronto time. So that's okay. Are you in, you're in mom's, uh, we were just talking about Sean's billiard room. And now you're in your parents' uh, study <laughs> or library, is yeah, it? Yeah, I'm in my, I'm in my, sorry, I'm in my dad's study. Sorry. Oh, he, really? Okay. Listener, so you're in- I'll have you know, I'm just in the room above the garage. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm just keeping things oh, real. Oh, yeah. Over you here. keep it really real. Yeah. Yeah. Really real. Um, what else is, what's near that room? Is your uh, workout room and your sauna near that room? Well, like, I, mm-hmm. I, I have a bunch of things in this one small little space. Um, yeah. I mean, I got to move the microphone out of the way if I want to, you know, work out in this room uh and then if i want to get dressed or shower i've got to mm-hmm. you know move the workout stuff out of the way yeah hey you know you know my dad's name is jim right mm-hmm. jim Arnett. congratulations yeah. and did you guys know that he likes to drink uh, highlighters <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, a we, mug of highlighters will is holding up a mug that says jim <laughs> on a it mug with, it says jim and then uh what are you doing in toronto will um just robbing your folks place I'm just doing um, I'm doing a little thing here for my my friends over at Freedom Mobile, which is a great place if you're looking uh, you know to get a great deal on, oh God, on a, one go. of their big gig this unlimited is, uh, plans. This is on our right, time. Go to FreedomMobile.ca. Um, is that what you're doing there? You're working? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're I'm not here, And then I just I just um, so .ca is not a uh, is not California web addresses. That's a Canadian that's web Can- address. Yeah, yeah, yeah. .ca, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, sometimes I make myself laugh. You guys. <laughs> Do you? I just, yeah, I just uh, need me. That's it. Well, you we'll get a, driving you get a, around all day in the you. car. You get a lot of you. <laughs> um, you guys, uh, ha, uh, I went on a Holly, uh, haunted hayride the other day. Sound it out. Yep. <sighs> haunted hayride. Man. Yeah. Have you guys ever been to that one in Los Angeles, the hayride? Uh, hayride? Well, I think when I was six or seven. Oh, come on, it's fun. Yep. No, Abel did it uh, a couple weeks ago. It's fun, right? Also, somebody not yet a teenager. We 12. Um, He's 12. <laughs> and so how was it, Sean? It's, it's fun. It's like you guys, I think you would like it. It's like, you know, you get in a, you get in a wagon with a bunch, bunch of people and, yeah. you know, you go through Griffith Park and they scare the crap out of you. It's kind of fun. Really? It's, it's, yeah. like, a, it's like a haunted hayride, like they, the people run out of the bushes and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. You know, speaking of bushes in Griffith Park, uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> this is a true story. Uh, oh, I used God. to I used to run outside. Now I now I run here in the my small little uh, closet of a room here with a treadmill. Um, but uh, I used to run through Griffith Park, and oh, yeah. uh, and I tell uh, I tell my friends, boy, you know, I I the friendliest people in Griffith Park. You know, I, <laughs> there's some funny kept, business going on. Kept running by these guys, they just kept waving at me, and they said. You know what? About what time of day do you run? I said, "Boy, I don't know. Like right around, you know, late morning or early, like around lunchtime." Uh, yep. At lunchtime at Griffith Park, famously, supposedly, you can uh, just take a walk or a jog and find any dude you want by a bush, and he'll uh, he'll give you an HJ, a BJ, whatever. It depends on how much that. money you're holding. <laughs> But there's a section there in Griffith Park where it's just okay. hookup central. That's why when I asked Sean for a good place to, to jog, he said Griffith Park. And I said, why? And he said, because it's very handy. <laughs> and you thought it was just centrally located. I, yeah. I have never heard of that story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> um, let's get to our guest, which I'm so excited about. It's a wonderful segue. Great. All right. So it is I, a tremendous segue. I know. I'm always excited for my guest, but... This one is a, kind of like a mic drop, okay? 
Mm-hmm. Your 80s childhood dreams are going to come true. Your 90s childhood dreams, your 2000 childhood dreams, Cindy Lauper. and your current dreams. This woman is at the center of all your favorite iconic franchises that we'll talk about later. Born and raised in Manhattan. She went to the same two schools I did, Stanford and Yale. So, of course, she speaks three <laughs> languages. Sure. I don't know what they are. But she loves gardening and is afraid of elevators. As far as her work Martha goes... Stewart. As far as her work goes, if you don't blink, she was in Annie Hall for like six seconds. Wow. Annie Hall for six seconds. The respect seconds. and love and admiration she gets in this business of ours is as tall as she is. Guys, it's one of my favorite actresses of all time, Sigourney Weaver. Whoa, what? Sigourney Weaver. It's Sigourney Weaver. It is there Sigourney she, Weaver. There it's she so is. so glamorous. <laughs> Hi, you guys. I'm Hi. so excited to be here. Oh, how By cool. the way, you you look beautiful, and and you know you didn't have to like zhuzh up for us because th- nobody's going to see. Oh, this. I didn't. Yeah, no, she's oh. she's oh. doing something important after this. You watch. This is the way I look, you know, when I'm vacuuming the house and doing the dishes. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. I didn't is my favorite response to that. So, Don't Gourney, you have you ever been to Griffith Park? <laughs> I have, but I think I was on a horse, so I missed uh, all the fun. So was I. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take a sip after that. Yeah, you're not allowed to take a little comedy sip. <laughs> Sigourney Weaver, welcome to the show. My yeah, God, this is, this so is such an honor to have you. It really is. Oh, yeah. well, that's yeah. very sweet of you, but by the time our segment is over... I don't know that you'll feel like that, but it's very kind of you to say. No, I, I'm I a big been... fan of this show and of no, each of you. you. And I'm, well, thank I'm delighted you. to be here. And Likewise, I didn't know, you're probably so sick of talking about this. I didn't know your real name was Susan. Sue? Wait, what? Yeah. yeah. Sue and Susie. And does anybody call you Sue or Susie? Well, they, you know, <laughs> you can't change your destiny. I did change my name to Sigourney when I was about 13, but now everyone calls me Siggy. So, oh, you know. Siggy Susan. I was trying to get a longer name because by that time I was almost six feet tall when I was 11. So I thought, Susie wow. is too diminutive. Sure. When Susie Snowflake, there's Susie Snowflake. Yeah. Yeah. Or Wake Up Little Susie or all those. You or know. Susie Cream Cheese. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, and from The Great Gatsby, right? Is that why you thought of that? That's right. I saw it. It's mentioned once. What is Sigourney? I think it's um, Jordan Baker's aunt is mentioned, and it's like Mrs. Sigourney Faye or something like that. And I just looked, it was an S, in case I liked the initial, and it just went on for a long time. And how ended you, with a Y, you... which I think is very upbeat. And your parents? Yeah. Yeah. What did your, parent, yeah, what'd you, what'd your parents say? Were they like, hey, we gave you a nice name, and now you've decided... What kind of thanks is this? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they did call me S for a long time, <laughs> in case I changed it again. But uh, ironically... My mother was named Desiree because they'd had like eight boys and finally they had a girl, but everyone called her Liz. And my father was named Sylvester, but because he was a little redheaded kid, he and his brother, they were called Pat and Mike, so he was Pat. So they couldn't say anything to me. So Uh you come from a long line of people who are not happy with the names they were given. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. What about your middle name? It begins with a name. Alexandra. Alexandra. Oh, that's a beautiful name. That's my mother's name. It's a beautiful name, but it's a bit long. Yeah, but Alex is a great short for for a woman. But I knew a really obnoxious girl named uh, Alex at camp, go. so I couldn't do that. What about brothers or sisters? Were they uh, equally um, unhappy with their names? Well, no. My father was a Roman history nut, mm-hmm. so he named my brother Trajan. Trajan. After a really wonderful emperor, and he wanted to name me Flavia. <laughs> which my mother <laughs> Now that I would have changed. I would have Flavia. Immediately. Yeah. Oh my God, that sounds so close to something I know, else. I know. This is a very rich uh, <laughs> history. Uh, this is an incredible. What was happening at your house? Uh, these are interesting people. I know. I'm. I'm dead serious. I'm I like sorry. It. No, 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 move on. No. My no, mother, no. First of all, my mother. My mother's name is Alexandra. My partner's name is Alessandra, and my son's first name is his real first name is Alexander. Well, Alexander the Great. So Alexander the Great. And do you know that a, a, a women traditionally spelled Alex when they shorted uh, with an I? And that's how you differentiate oh, between... Oh, Alex. Yeah, yes, A-L-I-X. That's, I understand that. I've what, seen A-L-I-X? That. Yeah, my mom spells it A-L-I-X. Does yeah. she really? Mm-hmm. Wait, huh. Sigourney, how many brothers and sisters did you have? I have one brother. One brother. Trajan. And then, and growing up, so what kind, What was growing up like? That you could just be like, I want to change my name. And they're like, great. Was it like uh, crunchy and 60s <laughs> and love and whatever? Well, my father 
was working, uh, he was head of NBC in the 50s. Oh, wow. So wow. Uh, he produced show of, show of Shows and created the Today Show and the Tonight Show. Come on. He did? All of that. Hang on, What's Sean. This, this is your guest. This has got to be covered on the <laughs> Wikipedia page. I did not know this. I did not know this. What's Her his name? Her father created the Today Show. Yeah. Hire Will. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? Sylvester. Sylvester Pat Weaver. Name, Sylvester. And she just said it. I didn't know that. And Jimmy You're Fallon just, just so fired. Uh, said nice things about him the other night when, you know, they, they think of him as their, the father of the Tonight Show. Sylvester Weaver. Yeah. yeah. Sylvester Pat. Okay. Pat Weaver is really what he's called. So what's so crazy is I met you once for two seconds backstage at the Tonight Show when oh. I was like 27 years old. Hmm. And um, just three years ago, really made a real imprint and, on her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we passed each other in the hall in the back. I just think that's wild. I was like, yeah. oh my God, hi, nice to meet you. And you were like, hi, yeah. nice to meet you. So it. then, does that mean your childhood was was uh, around show business? And and uh, is that where you got your your taste for it, or was it was that later? I was very shy, so yeah. I don't think I imagined even developing a taste for it. But what I must say is, that my father would come home after the day, I guess before he went back for the night shows, and he always seemed in a good mood. You know, he was always laughing. And I thought, and we had lots of, you know, we had we had those people come in and out, like Red Skelton and Jackie Gleason did their, you know, um, This Is Your Life. So yeah. he was working with people who sounded absolutely wonderful to me. Um, mm -hmm. And so it took me many, many years to say, I want to be an actor. Uh, for various different reasons. But I guess I was always maybe trying to head toward a little area of that world because I knew it was um, hard work and unpredictable and often unfair, which I think yeah. is a great advantage to know that going in. Yeah. But um, but I also knew my father laughed a lot during the day. I love that. But wait a second. I mean, what, what an interesting thing, though. So he, he creates the Today Show and the Tonight Show, and he's doing them simultaneously. Working on them. Well, first he was running the network. And so wow. he had the regular shows, like show of shows. But then the network, the world could not imagine having any kind of TV on in the early morning. Sure. And they couldn't imagine TV on at night. So it sort of right. went from, I don't know, five to eight. You know, it was very limited in those days, in the early 50s. So when he you know, pitched to the General Sarnoff, who owned RCA and NBC, that he wanted to do this morning show. People should wake up in the morning, be able to turn on TV, find mm -hmm. out what happened overnight, get a few laughs from Dave Garraway and all that stuff. The, the general was horrified, and he, my father pushed it through anyway, and it's, you know, still That's running. So, and, 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 and maybe you can answer that, because I remember hearing once, uh, years ago, that the idea of the late night program, i.e., the Tonight Show, was part just that it was empty airways, but also so that the last thing people did was leave their TV on that channel. That's right. So that ah. the next day, when you turned your TV on, it was they had they already had your attention. That's right. Did well, that's you cool. ever hear that from your dad? Uh, I or? did. Yeah, I'm not talking. Yeah, to not you. Uh, no, I didn't. But but he wasn't telling me the secrets of NBC. <laughs> so. But it's a good idea. I'm um, Sigourney. <laughs> sidebar: I'm doing a play on Broadway next year. Oh, I'm playing called? Oscar Levant, and the play takes place at the backstage at the Tonight Show. Wow! Yeah. Can I do a walkthrough? Yes, like please. a ghost. Um, <laughs> now wait. I didn't know that. W so when I was in college, we were obsessed with Christopher Durang. Like e yes. every play was like, oh my god, let's do a Christopher Durang play because it was the, the they were the he was kind of like the Neil Simon of our generation, right? And I, I would look at the opening of all his plays. I was like, it would be like starring Sigourney Weaver. And I was like, wait, the movie star was on in play? Like, as a first time at such a young age, I realized, oh, as an actor, you just weren't, you couldn't just be one thing. You could do all the things. But I was blown away to see your name as the original cast in so many Broadway plays. Yeah, I doubt it said starring. I think mm. we just had our names. <laughs> oh, well, well no, yeah, the characters. characters, right. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. No, but that's how I, you know, that saved me because I, I was quite discouraged at drama school. And, and luckily, when I came to New York, even though <clears throat> I was looking for a job in a florist or, or anywhere, you know, a cake store anywhere but a show business because I've been so discouraged. 
you know, I kept working with Chris and all our friends and um, all of off Broadway. And um, I'm so grateful that that is how I started with about five years of and Duran all those comedies. And, they were yeah. all comedies. And Albert and Arado and all the all the gang. Do you still do a bunch of theater? Do you have to even have time to? Do you want to? I did. We did uh, um, Vanya, Sonia, Masha, and Spike on Broadway yes. for a year, just so about great. in 2013. And then since then, I've been doing Avatar. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> Avatar and some other stuff. <laughs> for the, I haven't heard of it. Wow. Um, <laughs> when does that come out? <laughs> Avatar 2 is coming out uh, December 16th. And did you sh didn't you shoot the third one at the same time? Well, there's like five. Yeah, two and three. There will be five. It's all part of one long story about this family. Wow. I love it. It's so great. You know, it, it's so funny because, the, the uh, you know, the Avatar came out to uh, such fanfare and success. It was, you know, really well received critically and at the box office, et cetera. To then have this follow-up, this film that's been made, as you can attest to, for a long time, and there's a lot of surrounding it, to just call it Avatar 2 seems so uh, <laughs> sort, of, sort of unceremonious. No, it's the way of the water. The, the way of water, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, and because James Cameron has this, like, fascination with water, we don't, I don't, I, you know, hopefully he'll come on the show one day. Yeah. But wait, Betty'd but love to. tell me about, didn't you have to, like, learn how to breathe? And didn't you film underwater for, like, a long time? she learned time how to breathe underwater. Tell us about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll just show you my gills. Huh? No, but I uh, we did. We actually worked with uh, Kirk Crack, who teaches the Navy SEALs, and um, Jim doesn't do anything by half. So he really wanted us to be comfortable in the water and be able to do scenes underwater. Um, so we studied for a whole year with Kirk, and um, mm. we all had to do breath holds, which you train to get up to, and. Um, I was able finally to do a static breath hold for six and a half minutes. Oh my God. What? I can't, that's unbelievable. But anyone can do it if you have Kirk Crack. My husband was with me because he trained with me. We both did it that day for six and a half minutes, and neither of us can believe it. Wow. And we will be right back. Smartless is supported by Audible. You don't ride an elevator for the music or pick an airline for the movie. So when it comes to audio entertainment, it makes sense to choose Audible. It's the home for stories told by the biggest stars like Ethan Hawke or Kerry Washington, Kevin Hart. It's home to epic adventures and chilling mysteries and can't miss comedies. Audible is the home of storytelling. And you know, if I'm talking about storytelling in a positive way, that it must be good because for the most part, I hate storytelling, especially when it comes from filmmakers. Let your imagination soar with audiobooks, podcasts, and originals. For instance, by the way, by the B, Heat 2 just came out by Michael Mann and Meg Gardner, uh, which is the follow-up to Heat, the film. They wrote this book, Heat 2, Narrated by voiceover legend Peter Giles, who uh, also happens to be um, one of my close mates. Good guy. Great guy. But he is one of the all-time great narrators. And this He Too is unbelievable. It's riveting. It's, so, it's just everything you want in that kind of thrillery book told by a guy who really knows how to tell a story. That's just one example of what it's like. It's nonstop unbelievable any sort of genre any kind of book that you want audible has it audible is the home of storytelling with all your audio entertainment in one app audible has an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs mysteries thrillers motivation wellness business everything just all that and more so as an audible member you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog including the latest bestsellers and new releases members also get full access to a growing selection of included audiobooks audible originals and podcasts you can download or stream our included titles all you want let audible help you discover new ways to laugh be inspired or be entertained New members can try for free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash smartless or text smartless to 500-500. That's audible.com slash smartless or text smartless to 500-500 to try Audible free for 30 days. Hey, Smartless listener, we're brought to you in part by StoryWorth. If you're spending time with loved ones for the holidays, chances are you're going to hear a lot of stories. The ones you love to hear and the ones you've heard too many times. But... 
Have you ever wanted to help your loved ones document those timeless stories? It can be challenging to write an entire book of life memories, but StoryWorth makes it fun and easy. See, every week, StoryWorth will email your loved one a single life-related question that you pick from their collection, like, what's the bravest thing you've ever done? Or, what's the farthest you've ever traveled? All they have to do is reply with a story. Then, after a year, StoryWorth compiles your loved one's stories, memories, and even any photos into an exquisite hardcover book creating a valued keepsake. That is so amazing and fun. And I realize I want to do that with my folks this holiday season because it would be so great to get in their own words, um, you know, thoughts about their own experiences from their own lives and then have that uh, for, you know, for the rest of my life. And that's something that I can share um, with my siblings and I can share it with my kids and our whole family. And it's something that we can hold on to. So I'm really looking forward to doing this. Millions of stories have already been told with StoryWorth because they make the process so simple. So get started with your loved one for the holidays. And before you know it, you'll both be cherishing those timeless stories for generations to come. Help your family share their story this holiday season with StoryWorth. Go to storyworth.com slash smartlist today and save $10 on your first purchase. That's S-T-O-R-Y-W-O-R-T-H dot com slash smartlist to save $10 on your first purchase. Storyworth.com slash smartlist. Thanks, Helix, for their support. Man, do we love Helix over here at Smartless. They've been on this ride with us since early days and we love them not just because of that but also because we all sleep on helix mattresses and we all love them um i got the helix uh, midnight lux mattress uh, sean got the helix dusk lux mattress and jason also got the same thing i did the helix midnight lux mattress what's better than sleeping on a helix mattress knowing what Helix mattress your buddies sleep on, I guess. I don't know if it's better, but it's good information to have. Anyway, the point is, we love them. I also got Helix mattresses for the kids uh, that are amazing. These, uh, uh, you know, uh, twin bed mattresses that the kids just, they're, they're just fantastic. And, and Helix Sleep is a, here's what they are. They're a premium mattress brand that provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. So. The Helix lineup includes 14 unique mattresses, including a, a collection of luxury models and a mattress for big and tall sleepers, and the mattress I just mentioned that's made just for kids. Is there anything worse than going to a mattress store and laying down on a mattress that, that you know, hundreds of other people, you know, have tried out before you? Gross. Uh, and then you got some over-eager sales associate asking probing questions. Order a Helix mattress online and receive an easy, no-contact delivery. And... How are you going to know which Helix mattress works best for you and your body? Well, you're going to take the Helix sleep quiz and you're going to find your perfect mattress in under two minutes. You got two minutes, friend. I think you do. All right. So you should never have to compromise on comfort. Helix has mattresses with cooling technology that help regulate your body temperature, whatever the season. These guys, they got it all. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listener. Go to helix.com slash smartless. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Back to the show. Now, can I ask you a, 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 a potentially tacky housekeeping question? If if you are obligated to train for a year for a film before you start shooting, are you paid for that year of training? <laughs> That's a very good question. And we were shooting at the same time we were training. Okay. So we got there in the summer of 2017 and started doing a lot of parkour. Yeah. And um, I, w I actually play one of the kids in Avatar 2. So I had to do everything the kids did. Um, and at the same time, we started uh, training. Mm -hmm. So you'd like shoot in the morning and then train in the afternoon or no, vice versa? No, I'm trying to remember. We had about two months of training. And then when you weren't shooting, they would bring you over to the little tank in Manhattan Beach. And you would do more and more uh, challenging stuff. And then eventually they took us to a final sort of rehearsal off the big island. And uh, we learned how to 
swim with uh, sort of underwater vehicles, which would then represent other species that we might meet in the That's crazy. Water. You see, she's well, being I, very I love, careful not there, to reveal any I should any be very, very here. careful. So, so, Gordy, Jason would love to get a, um, a hold of your day out of days and maybe yeah. the one line or two. <laughs> yeah. And, he, and if he could get a number on the first AD just so he could work on his hard outs, that would be yeah. great. I mean, need all. to know your turnarounds and things like that because I'm oh. sensing there's some overtime that could be OT. But, um, <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, yes. Sigourney, but don't you have to do a lot of, uh, in addition to the water stuff and maybe for the other ones, and I know for the first one, all that motion capture green screen stuff, right? Well, may I just say yes. that everyone in the world thinks we still do green screen. I haven't done a green screen since a pickup for the first Ghostbusters that oh, long wow. ago. Wow. So I've never done green screen except wow. that one time. This is all performance capture. Yeah, performance capture. You know, like capture, Andy Circus. I mean, yeah. 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 And it's actually kind of a wonderful theatrical experience. You don't have to worry about lights or makeup or, you know, it's just you and your little black suit. Yeah. Your little so leotard. explain that to uh, to our to our Tracys out there that, that okay. have no idea what what that what, first of all green screen uh, is something where if you stand in front of a big uh, piece of green fabric uh, they can later cut out all the green stuff behind you and put in uh, a picture of mm -hmm. mountains or whatever they want to put you in or front charging of charging rhinoceroses yeah. Yeah. or something right nowadays uh, they have you act in front of uh, what. Um, and 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 you are wearing a suit that captures and your movement. there's cameras tied to your head and your yeah. side, right? So you're in a big empty space called the volume, and <sighs> you may have basic sets built to run up and down and jump over this or jump over that. They all represent parts of Pandora. That will be drawn in later, like topography of the. Yes, exactly topography. Um, so that we can do the scene running through an approximation of yeah. that landscape and um you have a suit on with various i don't know ping pong balls ping pong balls <laughs> little Re receptor um, receptors little receptors um and you have a helmet that has two cameras facing you which must be just an awful angle i don't it's for the it's a dream for will the, uh yeah. for, for uh <laughs> so there's a little china ball on a third arm there he'd be oh, real right. happy that. Yeah. and then i think there's also one facing uh, yeah. the person you are talking to. And that's oh. all for Weta Digital in New Zealand who so spends, I wish I knew the exact time and amount of money, but it's like to make an avatar, it's it's all CGI. It's yeah. all CGI. And, and, and how do you, how do you, a dumb actor question to actor, mm -hmm. how there do you comes. connect to the material when you're, you're just not a dumb in, person? Yeah. Dumb person to smart you're person. Sean. <laughs> it's quicker. How do you, from Sean to Sigourney. Uh, do you, how do you connect to the material when you're not in the thing and you're not, and everybody's dressed like you and you're looking across and you can't probably see yeah. them because there's a camera in your face? That's why I feel it's like an early theater rehearsal where you just have an empty stage and you've read the script and you know who's playing what and you just are there as actors making the scene work and it's not for any camera it's literally for you know for each other yeah mm -hmm. and uh, of course cameron has about 14 guys hidden around the set doing shots of different people and when jim and i won't be able to explain this well jim created a camera for the first avatar which kind of looks like of he's holding um, a dowser. Uh -huh. And when you're there, you can actually look over at a specific uh, screen and see your roughed out avatar uh, mm -hmm. being and, and how much taller they are than humans and how they relate oh, to the landscape. Wild. So that's a kind of very rough guide to go, oh, I see. I'm twice as tall as the boy I like, you know, in the, mm -hmm. the next story. And then you just, you forget about all that and you just work on these beautiful, very compelling scenes that Jim Cameron has written about this family. And, so and you, Don't you play a teenager in this one or something at some point? I do. Yeah, she, it's I do. crazy. Yeah, she said, yeah. John, are you listening? Yeah. Sean, you know no, what you, I, I, sense, I sense that she's, <laughs> she's using something. You should plug the earphones in. Look, it's, yeah. called, <laughs> it's called an imagination. You should look <laughs> into it. and Because uh, she has obviously a very vivid one and she doesn't need your, all your TikToks to get inspired. 
<laughs> now, have you seen? Have you been able to see all the stuff that he said will eventually be wrapped around you? I.e., what your character looks uh -huh. like, what the what the world looks like. Have you seen a rough cut of it, or will you see it when we all see it? Because it takes so long to finish. He is taking a long time to edit it down to three hours because, of course, he has a lot of material. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll see it when we go to the, is it called a royal premiere? Maybe one of the royals will want to come see it. And we start the promotional tour what? in London. Yeah. So Why? we'll have to see if it's Prince Charles, or Prince William, or I'm Prince sorry, George. King Charles. King, King, Charles. King, Charles. King Charles. King Charles, yes. Well, yes. there goes a royal premiere. <laughs> <laughs> We can cut that part out, Sigourney. <laughs> yes, please cut that. Things are safe. Um, but wait. Anyway, I so I will see it when, when the world sees it. You wow. Know. Um, I do want to ask you, because I've never met you, just just a couple questions about Alien. I know you probably Do you remember about... meeting him back? So he wants to get back to that. I'm sorry. He's do you remember really... me at the no, He's Sean's probably forgotten he asked that. Go ahead. Wait, go. I just want to ask you something, something like Alien or Avatar okay. or something. I always wonder, with actors like you in massive franchises, are you as these guys are going to go nuts? Mm -hmm. Are you as into the mythology and like the backstories and science of it all as we as the audience are, or do you really just think of it as a job you're focusing on your character, or are you kind of, or do you get into it at all? You know, I kind of treat them all the same. Yeah, it's just the script. I'm on this. You know, when I first did Alien, I couldn't understand why I was working in such beautiful sets. Uh -huh. And when I wasn't on, I could roam through this world. And I remember thinking, it's so nice of Ridley and Fox to create these worlds <laughs> that we yeah. can just walk through when we're off camera and feel like we're still on the planet. I thought right. they did it for us. And I was very touched by that. And then, of course, <laughs> I realized it's all for the camera. But the truth is, is that you have done some really iconic science fiction work. Um, yeah. And uh, maybe oh Sean is wondering, is that is that just... Did you gravitate towards that or did it just find you? In other words, do you have like a passion for science fiction? No, I was no. cast. Yeah. Excellent. Wow. I was on a short Excellent. list for Ripley and I told Ridley I didn't like the script and I got the part. So. <laughs> I, I want to talk about that. Yeah. Against, against, your, against your better judgment, you did it. But I will say this. Let me, as a follow-up, even though you don't have a sort of a, a natural draw or whatever it is to science fiction, but because you've been part of all these incredibly iconic science fiction uh, uh, pieces, do you have a sort of uh, an appreciation for it? Like over the years, have you come yes. to embrace it and appreciate it for what oh, it is? Absolutely. It's an amazing space to work in because yeah. it's always in the future. Mm. And that's it is about, you know, about being human and what our future is. So I think that's why... The younger audiences love it. It's still relevant, you know. Yeah. Took me a while. I mean, listen, once you've done all these, really a ricocheting around the, the future, um, I totally get it. I love it. And especially working with Jim Cameron, who mm. is either thinking underwater or out in space, you know. Yeah. We're in Alpha Centauri, I guess, is our our solar system for Pandora. No, it's fascinating. It is fascinating. fascinating. Yeah. I love it. I'm so lucky. Yeah. And, and and Ripley and Ripley is like this iconic character of like sort of the embodiment of of sort of like toughness and and kind of grit and and somebody who's you know do you how, do you wear that well do you do you like am I like that, that? no, no. Well, no. <laughs> I, I scream gonna, at a spider <laughs> <laughs> no I wasn't gonna ask I, I didn't mean that I meant more how do you feel when people sort of project that on you or how do you like that mantle do you like it or do you kind of shirk it. You know, I consider it Ripley's mantle, and I try to, mm -hmm. I, I feel like I have to then throw that to her. Yeah. Um, I feel that way about Ripley, too. And, in fact, about the woman I based Ripley on. She's still like that, even though she's on Earth. So I, mm -hmm. I feel like a, you know, I'm a vessel, you know, and I, mm. and I was very, very lucky to be able to tell these stories. I was very lucky to have the writers who decided to make the lone survivor a woman. Mm -hmm. uh, I was very lucky to have guys working with me who liked, you know, strong women. But it was all a commercial decision to make the survivor a woman because they just thought, you know, story-wise, no one will ever suspect that that's going to happen. Interesting. Wow. It's, yeah, I, re I remember being so, was it, which, which alien was it when, uh, when you shaved your head? Was that? That's uh, three. That's three. Was it, I just found that so... I don't know. It's something about that time period or that moment right there. It seemed like such an incredibly 
brave and courageous and forward thing for this huge female movie star actor to do something as you know yeah. sort of traditionally unglamorous as to like shave your head um did it feel more frightening or did it feel like this is something that's that's kind of cool and courageous and let's do it and and was it and 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 did you do it yourself or t- well, tell me about that it was uh david fincher yeah uh, he'd just done Vogue, you know, and he was asked to do um, <laughs> oh, right. three. right, the Madonna video. Yeah. yeah. And um, and so we were at this meeting with Fincher and some of the suits, and it ended. And uh, we all got up, and someone at Fox, probably the head, said, so, David, um, how do you see Ripley? And, uh, and we were on our way out the door, and he turned around and he said, I don't know. How do you feel about bald? And I said, sounds great to me. And then we <laughs> just went off and did it. No way. Really? Wow. I had a baby and um, I had lots of hair then. And so I tried to cut it in little, because they see black and white, I tried to cut it off in little stages so I didn't frighten her. <laughs> we were bald <laughs> oh, at the same time. Wow. It's chilly. Otherwise, I think it's a really cool look. It's yeah, so really cool. cool, and I so mean, cool. It's just what a beautiful look too, and and that sort of postmodern look too. Did the studio freak out when they saw the first footage? That oh my god, they weren't they weren't kidding. No, I think they were delighted. I I think I was the one. I my wig that has to work in the beginning was sort of you know problematic, like a <laughs> dog trying to run off my head, and so that was <laughs> that was the greater concern I think than how I looked bald was how I looked with the wig on and. Mm-hmm. Did that match, you know, the Ripley we last saw? But wasn't Alien your first feature film ever? Well, basically, yes. Yes, the first week they had to say, Ridley kept saying, you know, can you stop looking in the camera? (laughs) And I said, well, I'd love to stop looking in the camera, but you keep putting it right in front of me. (laughs) And I just had to ask, I I asked a couple of the actors, I said, how do you deal with that? You know, how do you deal with it right being there? And (laughs) it's right there, so... Um, but what are the uh, odds? You know, I mean, my God, your first one out of the gate. How like, did that happen? You know, but it was, you have to remember, it was a very small budget movie. You yeah. know, it was Ridley Scott's second movie. I mean, I decided very quickly that I didn't have to worry about any of it because it was just like being off off Broadway. I yeah. just was going to be in a different medium, but the stakes were low. It was, you know, it was fantastic story, but, it, you know, no one even thought about franchises there then maybe and it was all on a stage and it was all on a stage too so it was in a small area right it was felt, probably felt really contained and yeah. at Shepperton yes yeah, yeah. At how did they how did they find you what you being your first movie had you been doing a bunch of television shows or, or no plays or? I had I had gotten my first job at the public theater on a John Guare play where I played a maid who was cleaning the glacier uh, a year before huh. and that makes um, sense. And <laughs> I feel very lucky. Um, and um, so, you know, I'd been meeting. I was up for a, a Mike Nichols movie. I, you know, I was up for a Bob Fosse movie. I hardly had an agent. People really didn't know what to do mm-hmm. with me. And um, I even was part of this depressing class where actors sat around and thought about how to get agents' attention like, should you make some chocolates, put them in a box, <laughs> sure. and you eat them all, and then you have your 8 by 10 underneath. Delicious. Uh, that's that sounds like a sh- classic Sean Hayes. <laughs> I, I didn't, I didn't do any me, I of those. I did shit like that all the time. But I did write one. The agent who finally accepted me, I wrote something like, love Sigourney in parentheses, it's a crime that I'm not working. Weaver. <laughs> I was just desperate. I was just desperate. I hope they saved it. Um, was the Bob Fosse film that you read for, was it All That Jazz? I think it was the one um, with Mariel Hemingway, uh, 1981 or oh, yeah, yeah, one yeah, yeah, of those. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, Star 80. Star 80. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, think it's crazy. So. You know, when I was in, just a little t- sidebar um, thing, and when I was in high school, uh, I watched, I saw you in Gorillas in the Mist, and you were, like, amazing. And uh, after that movie, because the trailer would keep running on TV all the time, I mean, the commercial for it. And so my go-to joke as a kid uh, to anyone that was bothering me or teasing me was mm-hmm. your line from Gorillas in the Mist, which was, 
Get off my mountain! I would say that <laughs> all, 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 the, all the time. Oh, I love it. I'm going to use that. It's much more fun to say than get away from her, you bitch, you know. I really <laughs> did say that all the time. Now, do you, get off my mountain still works. Yeah. There, must have been, there must have been in that time a lot of... Are, are there any films from that era that, we all, that, that you regret passing on or not doing that yeah. uh, that at the time you thought I, I can't get my head around this or I don't get it and then later you went oh I wish I'd been able to get, <laughs> get my head around that there are a couple of you know uh, in the 70s and 80s there were a lot of what I would call male fantasy movies like mm. Body Heat and Place mm. those were right. quite common that kind of and I just didn't get them yeah, I just yeah. felt that if I couldn't relate to the character and if there was not much character to relate to, I I would have been too insecure to just try to look good mm. and sound fascinating because I don't <laughs> think I'm charming enough to <laughs> to maintain that kind of focus uh, if I don't believe in what I'm doing. And right. that that's just me. I just couldn't relate to it. And speaking of that, like because a lot of your character, do you do you ever? Um, in include yourself in the process of writing with the writer or do you ever kind of like change some dialogue to fit your vision of the character because it just seems like something you might be interested in or do because it's so everything you say it seems so real and honest oh well that's very nice of you yeah that is i guess our job I, the only time i've really contributed stuff like that is when the script does not continue to be good <laughs> and then you survival, and then yeah, it's yeah. cutting and rewriting a little, so you can manage. Yeah, very diplomatically put, by the yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Most people would be like, "Yeah, that script was terrible," and I rewrote the whole second act. Yeah. <laughs> is your is your husband in the business? Uh, Jim uh, ran the Flea Theater for twenty years downtown. Uh -huh. Gotcha. He's an absolutely amazing director. Yeah. Um, and I feel very fortunate since we hardly knew each other when we got married that I had I ended up marrying someone who totally got what I did, uh -huh. respected the time it took, really enjoys working with me on the occasional script we have to yeah. rewrite or um, just working on working on. You know, I can run lines with him. We talk about stuff. Oh, so I great. like to hit the ground running. I have the same relationship, actually. Yeah, it's great. With her husband? With her husband, yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Does she know? Okay. I'm, I'm revealing it right now. <laughs> we'll be right back. Smartless is sponsored by BetterHelp. Boy, does life not come with a user manual. I know it's something that I've talked about before. Um... There are so many times in my life where I wish it did, though, come with a user manual. I, I'm 52. I know. Thank you very much. Uh, but the truth is, there have been so many moments that I've had to navigate over the years. And what's funny is, you think that as you get older, you get wiser. But sometimes that's not necessarily the case. And sometimes as you get older, it's just things get more complicated. And... I have found whether it's issues with, uh, with family or uh, issues that I've kind of let build up with me, what, having to do with anxiety and, um, you know, needing to talk to somebody about it. Therapy has just been an unbelievable outlet for me and been so valuable in letting go of a lot of things and helping move through difficult times. So, like I said, Life doesn't come with the user manual, but when it's not working for you, um, you know, it's it's just, it's really normal to feel stuck. And therapists are trained to help you figure out those stuck moments and, and help you figure out the, the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills and figure out ways through difficult times, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine called you. So I'm I'm really, really lucky. I, I, I can't advocate enough the idea of talking to somebody, talking to a therapist and, you know, help you navigate moments that are really tricky. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's very affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist, and if things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. 
Honestly, it couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash smartless. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash smartless. Our thanks to G4 for supporting Smartless. Let me just say, Jason is going to be very jealous about this one because this is a brand that he loves, and I know they love him, but I also love this brand because they make some pretty dope stuff. Add color to your game with G4. You'll find men's and women's apparel, footwear, and golf accessories all available at G4.com. G4's holiday gift guide features a limited edition capsule collection of on and off course items available while supplies last okay so g4 this great golf brand that also makes off course stuff i just got a brand new golf bag from g4 it's like leather and it's got like this kind of crisscross design on it it's got like a red stripe on it and it's a shoulder bag i can carry it it's got my name on it it's amazing but it's this beautiful black leather bag it's really lightweight but very sort of durable and cool and it's got the g4 logo on it it's so they make such great stuff i also have some g4 uh, uh golf shoes i have g4 uh golf gloves they make awesome stuff and the gallivanter golf shoe is very popular and boasts a traditional silhouette with modern performance properties it's got uh do you like optimal traction pattern? Check. Massaging and washable insoles? Check. Antimicrobial mesh lining for no break-in period? Check. Waterproof designs? Check. A lot of checks. Plus, you'll get complimentary shipping on all standard speed orders. Check out their site and order soon to ensure your gifts are delivered before the holidays by going to G-F-O-R-E dot com slash smartless to get 10% off your first order today. That's G-F-O-R-E dot com slash smartless. Smartless gets support from Viore Clothing. With the holidays coming up, you know, Viore pieces are pretty awesome for, for gifts. I've talked a lot about my core shorts, which I love, which I wear all the time. And I implore you to wear them as well because they're great for working out. They're also great for hanging out. I got this real great Viore jacket. I liked it so much in the green. I also got it in the black. It's like this casual kind of lightweight jacket. Oh, man, it just looks so good. It's just got this like sort of like classic design and you can kind of wear it anywhere. You could wear it with jeans. You can wear it with a pair of pants. You can wear it to dinner, blah, blah, blah. Here's the thing. If you're tired of traditional old workout gear, you got to check out Viore. Their product is incredibly versatile. It can be used for just about any activity, like running or training or swimming or yoga, but it's also great for lounging or weekend errands or meeting friends for brunch or going antiquing, which I'm sure some of you do, or even if you're just driving around aimlessly, you know, trying to make a friend. Everything they make is designed to look great in everyday life outside the gym. So, again, like I said, I got my core short. I wear it. I work out. Then I got to hop in the car. I got to go get some gas for the car. I got to go to the store to buy, get some food. I got to pick up this. I got to take the kids over to a friend's. I got to do all this stuff. Guess what, y'all? I'm still in the core shorts. And that's not a secret because I'm going wide with that. Viore is 100% offsetting their carbon footprint as well. They are also reducing and offsetting 100% of their plastic footprint from 2019 and beyond. They're utilizing better sustainable materials for their products, empowering your best active life. Feel good about the things you buy and also how they're made. Viore is an investment in your happiness. For our listener, they're offering 20% off your first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viori.com slash smartless. That's V-U-O-R-I dot com slash smartless. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75 and free returns. Go to viori.com slash smartless and discover the versatility of Viori clothing. And now back to the show. Let's get back to you guys got married before you knew each other. This was sort of an yeah. arranged thing. Um, we're making news today, you guys. <laughs> well, I was older. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I went to the Williamstown Theater Festival, and on the very first day I was there, I saw this cute guy chain smoking mm -hmm. in in the student union in front of like a stack of books on Chekhov, and I went, "Oh boy, wow, was it me? That's my kind of guy." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, then I didn't really speak to him. Um, and at the end of uh, wait, was that your strategy? You were gonna you were gonna kind of ignore him a little bit. No, it was, uh, Diane Weist and I were in uh, a pinter play on the main stage, and Jim was sort of directing the um, the non ex the non equity kids, and um, you know he ran the bar, and uh, <laughs> this guy sounds really hot. <laughs> <laughs> you know he he looked like a player, and I thought sure. he's not for me. Right? Yeah, I don't sure. like it. Yeah, I don't need that. Yeah, and so then at the end of the summer. I was sitting at the sort of party next to Diane Weesty, and I said, see that guy over there across the room? I saw him the first day. I'm going to go over and ask him to dance. And she went, oh, go, Siggy, go! Because we both were unattached that <laughs> summer. And waste. all we talked about was like, you know, just be the name of your biography, Go, Siggy, Go. Uh-huh. <laughs> And so, so you, you so walk over, so you, you, go saunter, over there. you saunter over, let's Well, maybe, maybe I tried to saunter. I got up to the guy who was standing with his friends, and I said, hi, you want to dance? And he went, no. And I, I just was like, wow. oh, now I have to get across the room. So I just remember going toward Diane, kind of, you know, getting closer to the ground. Oh. With every second he caught up with me, and he said, God, I'm so sorry. Of course I want to dance with you. But I couldn't look at him. I had been deflated so entirely. And then months later, I had a Halloween square dance birthday party when we started shooting <laughs> Ghostbusters. And I, I went through the book and I, I thought, mm -hmm, all right, give him another try shot. again. And I, he came uh -huh. and he had such a good time, even though he didn't know anyone. And about two months later, we decided to get married. No wow. way. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wait, and we've been wait, married wait, 38 so years. That's Thir amazing. I was say, oh, that's 38 awesome. 38 years. That's, that's, that's really cool. amazing. I think part of it is that you're not with each other all the time. I was yeah. off and away filming right. another alien or something. But, mm -hmm. no, he's so great. He's from Hawaii. He's filled with aloha. He's just, mm -hmm. I'm so lucky, you know. That's oh, great. that's he's amazing. Did you guys ever decide to have kids? Or were things just too busy? No, we have a wonderful daughter. Yeah. Who's now 32. I don't know. Wow. How, she still looks 12, but. Well, she's got such terrible genes, you know. Um, <laughs> well, did she go into the business as well? She teaches. Oh, wow. right. Yeah. Amazing. In fact, uh, they're non binary and they teach. I gotcha. Fantastic. Okay. Not, not acting, uh, 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 academics, yes? Uh, digital storytelling and nice. world building and things like that. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Cool. That's awesome. God, um, what a now, cool family. Yeah, yeah right. very cool family. <laughs> you we know, may give that impression, but we're no. Just I mean, Sean watches TV and 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 eats Sour Patch Kids all day. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, you could like have had one of those, you know. It's true. <laughs> I just watch all your movies on a loop, and you think I'm kidding. Um, but um, we would have been delighted I, to have you. Absolutely. But I, but speaking of weddings, didn't you officiate? Because you love dogs as much as I do. I think we all own oh, dogs. yeah. Right? And didn't you mm -hmm. officiate a dog wedding once or something? Come on. Yes. Yes. Uh, our our daughter was 10. Yeah. And um, uh, we decided to breed our little Italian greyhound. And Char said, well, if she's going to have babies, she has to get married. And I <laughs> said, well, <laughs> right. absolutely. So <laughs> we had... Petals in a little beautiful wedding dress that we bought at Zittimer's. Sure. Um, we had uh, the the groom. We had a best man who brought the groom in. Um, Char was the minister. We had a pre-puptual agreement. Wow. Uh, and uh, we had, it was covered. And I must say, they seemed quite in love. Mm -hmm. um, and then the honeymoon happened. <laughs> they couldn't figure out how to get together. Uh, I heard I heard they couldn't keep their paws off each other. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> guys. Yeah, he's, By the way, laughing. He's, guys. The yeah. Dumbest shit. Anyway, so now we have a, actually in during COVID, we, we did those two dogs are rest in peace long mm -hmm. ago. And now we have a little, a beautiful little uh, Italian greyhound named Cosi Fang Tutti because she oh. is an Italian greyhound. The Mozart opera. Yes. 
with a G. Yeah, Kosi Fang. That's great. Nice, Sean. Thanks. Yeah, Sean, good. That was a good catch. Good for you. <laughs> um, wait, so I, I want to know some more, just a few more things about Avatar before we let you go. Yeah. Now, yes. when you when you guys, so was there talk about filming them all at the same time? Are you guys, this is like more of a Bateman question, mm. are you guys con contracted to do all of them so you cannot do other work? You have to m remain you mean, available? You mean the full five? You mean all five? Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, you have to block out the next five years of your life. Did they pay for movie? first position? Go ahead, Sigourney. Yeah, well, that, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But no, I'm just yeah. curious, like, to know, like, do you have to keep yourself now available for that franchise for, you know, what, five, six, seven, eight, nine? Sean I don't know. has a one act he'd love for you to read. <laughs> so two's coming out. Yeah. In two years, three will come out. Probably after three, when Jim can imagine going back to this um, after, you know, creating a few more submarines, um, <laughs> we will start four and five, and we will shoot them uh, together, and then eventually they will come out. So the last one will come out in 28, where I will be, you know, walking with a cane. <laughs> and how long does it take to shoot each one? About? Well, um, I think I was on it working regularly a year and a half, but God. I think Jim probably... He had to do the live action, which is with actors you see. Um, that was another year and a half. So I'm sure it caught, it's like three three years to just shoot it. And meanwhile, Weta takes about five years to trans, you know, transform it. Wow. So it is a big just colossal. Thing. But the, no, I have, no, they have to work around my schedule. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Where, where do you do that? It's in Manhattan Beach for the performance capture. And, okay. um, and then in New Zealand uh, for the live action. Um, now, doesn't a nice quick run off Broadway or going back to Williamstown, doesn't that sound a little bit more manageable? I mean, yeah. what, if, what if you slide one of those, th like right in the middle of one of these avatars? Well, I shoots? do. I do yeah. try to, obviously, you really need to, you know, go to the opposite end of the spectrum yeah. and do a small, you know, I've done uh, about three small movies that are all coming out. Yeah. This year too, and um, and they they keep wow. me sane. Wow, yeah. so amazing! We watched. May I just say, I we were just devotees of Ozark, which was oh no, so terrifying. Oh, you. you guys <laughs> were so amazing in it. But I have one suggestion. Uh oh, yes, this is good. Yeah. We are locked at the very end. <laughs> yeah, I think it have, should have been your daughter because we assume that she's escaped yes. all of this, and she might have a, a normal life, maybe. Right. And if she had killed him, we would have gone, oh, my God, Total everyone tragedy. is going to be in this. Yeah. It would have uh, been way better. I think, I think a lot of people agree with you, Sigourney. It would have been way better. <laughs> William, Goldman's already, <laughs> William Goldman's already written a book about it. It's called How Ozark Could Have Been Better. Um, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I don't mean that to be. No, we just thought, oh, no I'm you know, with you. It's a yeah, great, great, we, we all great thought idea. It. I, you know, it's so funny. I emailed him that exact same suggestion. <laughs> um, Sorry. But anyway, Sigourney, we've taken up too much of your time. We love you. Thank you for being God, here. It's so cool a, you decided to do this. Yes. Thank you well, so I'm much. Well, I'm so grateful to you for thinking of me. And I, we love your show. And you guys what are awesome. Wonderful. And I love the way you do ads, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. We've got to do some of those today, I think. I wanted to go. do an ad for you. You want to? You, believe yeah. me. Why don't you do it? Men? Well, I don't know. I don't do we have, have the one? text. Well, or just what about a um uh hey hey buckle up uh here comes a new uh, uh smart oh, yes. list. That's yes, right. yeah, yes. let's do that. Okay. You, you, you yeah, do yeah. an intro. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we should do an intro. Just that? Let's yeah. Something like that. Yeah. You know what? Make okay. it make it your own. Just let's just have fun with it. Here yeah. we go. Rolling and well, introduce okay. yourself and then introduce <laughs> the show. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, who are you today? Who is that over there? I'm Sigourney Weaver, and I just want to say, hey, buckle up. Here comes a new Smartless. Oh, hey wow. wow. Wow, we're off to the races. <laughs> Keep nice. that was good. Anytime. Wow. Anytime. Wow. wow. Thank you, Sigourney. Okay. Thank I, you guys so much. And thank, thank you, Sigourney. Thank you, thank okay. you, thank Take you. Care. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 What a what a what a pleasant way to start the day. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, no I truly kidding. who doesn't when you're scrolling through the thing iconic. and see aliens on just sit and watch it I, every time. Sigourney Weaver is iconic. I didn't accidentally say I've been in love with her my entire life. Did I? That didn't come out. You right? did not that stayed that. internal. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> did you get, I think about all the movies we could have talked about. Go, I, we didn't even talk about Ghostbusters. 
No, I know, and that's and that was probably on on purpose, my because that that's where it really started for me. I know, and you well, know, because obviously, who are you going to call? Well, I guess a, oh, we you will. Know? By the way, I did want to mention to her because somebody once accused me, and, and she needs to know. I ain't afraid of no ghost. Okay. Well, he just did it again. <laughs> oh. no, no, but I wish it's that I had so just let her know. Stupid. I ain't afraid oh. of no ghost. Okay. <laughs> no. I'm oh, you're not. really, you're really. Well, I'm convic- adamant. Your conviction. I'm a, yeah, I'm adamant about it. <laughs> um, but you know, would you, when you guys have people like that on that you're super fans of, um, aren't you kind of afraid to ask them about? you know, the things that made them famous because you think they're just sick of talking about it. But yeah. all, but you kind of want to know, right? Well, yeah, that's that's what that's our little sort of like gift, our, our little privilege. We're so yeah. lucky to be able to just say, hey, um, excuse me, sir, can I ask you a question? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I love that, Jason, you always want to know like schedule and you always want to know, do you get Fridays? Like, what did you yeah. do? How did you get out? Of, you're always looking for the out. You get portal to portal, right? Or <laughs> it's, it's you, unbelievable. <laughs> You know, there's a show. There's a show called I don't know. I think it's on Netflix. Maybe it's called The Movies That Made Us. Do you know this show? No. no. And they and it's all these iconic movies, and they get some of the people that worked on them to talk about it, and they do. They have behind the scenes clips nobody's ever seen, and one of them was Aliens, and I just watched it like a month ago, and the I wanted to talk to her about it, about all of the. Um, it was just kind of a mess and everybody was yelling at each other and screaming and it got shut down for a while and then they went back and well, thank god thank god you didn't ask her when we just had her on the show <laughs> yeah. no what i know but i mean is, what are you doing <laughs> any the way, other exciting questions you yeah, neglected you to wanna, ask anybody else hey you got anything that you want to ask dax our first uh guest ever <laughs> now we're a couple hundred in maybe have you worked up uh, a good database of Post yeah. interview questions. Yeah. I actually, could Sean. Also, did you did you guys find like a a, a tear in the space time? Continu- where are you and Scotty finding all this time to watch all this shit? Holy crap! Right. What do you mean at night? You watch well, a lot of stuff. Does your night start around three thirty? I can't believe how many documentaries and stuff you've seen. I You're just like- watched the one on Sinead O'Connor. I thought that was pretty good. Wait, you guys oh. are always telling Will. It's the same as you reading ten books a day. That's true. I get. I I do neither. What am yeah. I so busy doing? I got it. I can I can I start? Uh, no, I, I wasn't off my uh, list? soliciting a response <laughs> at all. <laughs> Quiet. You know, I'd love to see. I'd love to see Alex come back in right through that rear door there. It's time yeah. for mom to do another uh, yeah, uh, she special there? guest spot. When you're when you're uh, done there visiting and working and stuff, is it going to be hard to say? Uh oh. Uh oh. Here it comes. Wait, I mean, again, again. Hang on. Here no, it comes. Oh God. Just, said, just to say bye. 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 I don't think we can ever use just bye. Why not? It's, Why not? I think um, it's lazy. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay, I here mean, comes Will's I, gonna try one. Here, 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 here. I yeah. live Let here. Me. I grew up here, but then oh, I moved God. to New York, it's and now I live in L.A. But I have but a there's no on coast. The coast, so technically, <laughs> um, I know. Bye, coast. Still not great. I feel like but we've better. used that one a million times. Yeah. No, we well, might here. By the oh, way, yeah, yeah, so I'm here. I'm here with. I'm here in my dad's study, and my sure. dad uh, went to the uh, University of Manitoba. Uh-huh. And uh, Manitoba, sure. uh, I'm here in my dad's study, and my my parents are. You from, don't need to. You didn't need to reset yourself. I didn't reset. There. We're gonna cut. We cut. Yeah, no, we're not gonna cut it. We're gonna ha- we keep in that you've you've reset <laughs> yourself. Still rolling. <laughs> so I'm here because I wanted to include. I'm here in my parents' place. Uh-huh. Yes, uh-huh. I am Will. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> You're reading anyway, for what parts? My parents are from I? Manitoba, which sure. in, in which they have you know the 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 the, the no. animal the pr- let's cut let's just do a brand new the, brand new slate is the bison. bison. What did he just say? God, that was oh a Manitoba minutes. is a Canadian bison. bison. Is that what he said? No, that's the province, and that their their provincial animal is the bison. bison! Fuck. Bison! It's just a wipeout. And then the music starts. We'll talk to you next week, listeners. That's all we got. Let's you say bye right now. Goodbye, everybody. (laughs) (laughs) Pasta. Smart. Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Michael Grant Terry, Rob Armjarv, and Bennett Barbaco. Smartless.
Our next episode will be out in a week wherever you listen to podcasts, or you can listen to it right now early on Amazon Music, or early and ad-free by subscribing to Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts or the Wondery app.